from fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, this is Pod Therapy. Real people, real problems, and real therapists. You can submit your questions anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. During these intros, I always like to take a headline from the news and make a joke about it, but I've been watching Fox News all week, and there's just nothing to report on. <laughs> there's nothing going on! It's been the slowest news cycle ever. <laughs> Oh, well, maybe next week. Sorry, everybody. Yeah. And now broadcasting from the churn, that guy's Dr. Jim Jobin. I'm Nick Tangeman. It's time for some hot there. It's weird, man. It's just like literally nothing. There's nothing. Like there, It's such a slow news cycle nothing that they're happened. down to... Just telling us about discounts on your local groceries. So yeah, and yeah. Uh, it was National Pancake Day. That's important, though. I'm glad that kind of stuff's being covered. So, was... so yeah, I like how pancakes are now allowed to be literally anything. And like, this is very America of us, which segues very nice into the sober October topic of eating. Yes. So like, I, I took my son to uh, breakfast uh, yesterday morning, and um, I am really curious where the statement "pancakes are allowed to be anything" is going. Red velvet pancakes. Red velvet pancakes, we all know <laughs> that's not breakfast. <laughs> Red velvet pancakes is clearly dessert. Do you, There's like chocolate chip do pancakes. You think regular pancakes are healthy. <laughs> he does. That's, this Wait is, a I minute. Think this, this answers a lot. I think do you that think really explains a lot healthy? to learn this month. <laughs> <laughs> like there's gonna be a lot of illusions. They are that are shattered. I guess that is why they're called cakes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, okay, a lot starting to make sense. I think you're just discovering what pancakes are. <laughs> Let's introduce our guests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have some friends in the studio who joined us uh, for more of the Patreon segment, but they're here with us. We've got Shay. How you doing, Shay? Good. And we've got our hubby Andrew. Hey, what's going on? So both of you folks are from Utah, which we've already chided you over. Yeah. And uh, Andrew, you're a firefighter, <laughs> true, and doing good work for the people. And Shay works for the dark side of the insurance markets, yes. though she's very passionate about trying very hard to redeem that <laughs> and saying the, that it is a nonprofit. The, it's the good. good dark side. It's the better. Yeah, we'll call it it's the like, dark. It's yeah. It's like when Twilight. Darth Vader threw the emperor over like right, he turned yeah. back the, the moment <laughs> where there's like redemption there's good in him but like we don't forget that you right. killed the entire Jedi school <laughs> <laughs> yeah. essentially Shay that's where I want to go with Thank you. The young yes. so I we'll get stick those references landing. 100% <laughs> so this is going to be such a fun episode if you guys are not already Patreons of the show uh, this is going to be the month that you want to do that not only can you join us and hear the Patreon conversation that we had with our guests um, and, and hear the post game as well but we are launching a really fun project this month we're gonna join uh joe rogan uh some little known comedian out there apparently he podcasts Saying joining him yeah it almost it sounds sound like, like he's with yeah, us like we're collaborating with joe rogan. so this works better when you don't tear <laughs> apart my subtle marketing uh, things no. <laughs> sometimes it works remember the yeah, dr drew thing I, yeah uh, I don't know. I don't know if that worked. Yeah. I don't know if worked is the right way. Yeah, we've been endorsed by Drew. Right. Okay. Okay. And, and Joe Rogan, though he doesn't even know who we are, uh, we're joining him. So you know, our uh, ally right. and 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 partner in this project, Mr. Rogan, uh, does Your a lack project. of shame just makes me Absolutely. so uncomfortable. Oh yeah. No, this is. <laughs> Look me in the eyes when I do it. It's hot. <laughs> All right. So uh, Joe Rogan has this bit. He does Sober October where uh, apparently he who – I think he smokes literally every day all day. And he's like <laughs> dropping acid all the time. Uh, this is when he sobers up for the month to regain his senses of uh, who he is and where he is. Um, but we're going to partner in that because as you may have heard, Nick and I dabble in addictions treatment. And so we thought this would be a really fun month. And so not only are we going to be talking about it during our A blocks of the show this month – but we're also going to be doing a ton of stuff on Patreon because Nick is going to be the treating clinician and Jim is about to be the patient. Yes. So you get to live uh, out your dream, buddy. So what is your goal? What My goal. So so sobriety. We have to define right. what that is. Well, yeah, because we're everybody. not really doing sobriety. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so we're treating this month as an opportunity to ask ourselves, OK, What does it look like whenever a person has developed a dependency on something or uh, informally, maybe in my case, an addiction to something uh, where you kind of use something that you probably shouldn't in disproportion, right? And so for some folks that they drink too much, for some folks they smoke too much. In my case, I could tone down on the food stuff, okay? So eating healthily and not eating uh, too much is is what I'm going to be aiming for during October. So my version of sobriety is going to end up being like 
uh, a certain amount of calories and a certain amount of nutrition, which is going to be a little bit blurry, but that's okay because a lot of people don't know this. Overeaters Anonymous is one of the 12 step fellowships. And we absolutely consider eating a very important part of like mm-hmm. what we're doing when we're treating addiction generally. Right. So as we walk through this process, for those of you at home, you can identify some sort of change that you want to make. So it doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be uh, food related or alcohol related or drug related. It could be something like if you want to get into exercise. It's right. almost kind of like a New Year's resolution, only we're going to science this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to science the, the hell out of it. That's this. right. We're not going to wish so, on that stupid exactly. ball. <laughs> we're going to get this one right. So we're going to be a little bit more methodical. Now, yes. for those of you at home, one thing that's really important is that you have to have a well defined goal. So if you haven't listened to it yet, go back and listen to the episode that I did with our friend Brian on goal setting. Yeah, smart goals. Smart goals. Yeah. And so listen to that and that will help you identify how you want to set a goal so that it's actionable. That right. You're going to take action. So it has to be well defined. So I'm going to ask you, Jim, how well defined is your goal as of right now? I, I do. Okay. The, the most well defined I can be. So the general spirit that I'm chasing here is is health. And nutritional health, right? Okay, fine. But unlike alcohol, where a person could say, hey, my goal is to not consume a drop of alcohol mm-hmm. for the month, this let's, – let's call this an addiction, okay? So for the purposes of our treatment month, we're going to treat me as if I have a food addiction, okay? Which is a real thing, folks. That's a real thing. So the thing about food addiction that makes it different than something like a methamphetamine addiction or heroin addiction or alcohol addiction, you can stop using heroin and never use it again and survive, right? Whereas food, you have to eat. And, and sex addiction is similar in this way, that those who identify as having sex addiction, it is not our clinical desire that they become abstinent from all sexuality. It's that we want them to define what is healthy sexuality for them and what is unhealthy sexuality for them in their own opinion right. and help them scale away from that. So in our food addiction work, we have to do that same thing, which is what you're asking about. How do you scale that in? For me, because I still need to eat in order to survive, apparently, um, I am setting a calorie goal daily. And do you have the goal? I do, yeah. So I'm going for 1,200 calories a day. Okay, and that was based on some analysis. 1,200? 1,200. Is that too high? That's no, too that's low. low. That's too low. low. Yeah. You think I, I should come up? Yeah, yeah that's probably. Fine. Let's do 2,500. <laughs> Take him, stay out of this. Okay, so 1,200 is fine. I, I, need I feel him to, like that was the right this number. Is my, this is my co-host. I need him to survive. Let's go to 2,500 <laughs> to be safe. 1,200 no, okay. is like the standard do I need to, Is this like lowest. prices right? Okay, I eat so like I, 900 to 1,000 calories a day most days. Uh, yeah. Well, let's do the Jacob diet. But wait a minute, wait, how much of that is whiskey? On. Oh, all of it. <laughs> I haven't eaten solid food. No. In a... <laughs> he eats 900 to 1,000 calories, but he consumes 3,000 No, I whiskey. mean, I eat, I eat like one good-sized meal a day. Okay. That's, and that's my food for the day. Okay. Okay, but that's but you're only getting 900 calories in that one meal? Do you yeah, usually. OMAD? 900 to 1,000 calories, somewhere, somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay. Really? Yeah. So, so I'll oh, meet you man, guys in the middle on this. Awful. I'll change it to what fourteen hundred? Is that fifteen hundred? Is that is that a solid number? Well, the standard Here's, American honestly, diet is two thousand. Yeah, yeah. So I'm Here's coming what under I would that, probably right? do. Yes. Okay. If if you're if you're okay, I, I want to preface this by saying I'm a licensed alcohol and drug counselor, so I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah, no. <laughs> but as as everybody should now, assume at all times that, during the show. That being said, yeah. Um, what you, what I would recommend okay. is going online. There's like calorie calculators where you're putting in your, your current weight, your okay. age, your activity level, and you figure out how much your body burns just to stay alive. This is getting on, extremely on average, right? complicated. So it's like Hold your on. BMR versus your TDE. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I have right? KFC. <laughs> <laughs> That's all okay. I have. So here's, I guess for the listener, this is a really good example of we need to do more research in this because I guarantee you right now, if you just decided October 1st, you're going down to 1,200 calories a day, you're going to fail. Okay. There's no way you're going to be able to all do right, that. All right. So I have, I, how many calories realistic. do you take in right now? I don't want to talk about that. I'm guessing. <laughs> at least <laughs> how many is in this at cup? least three thousand. Yeah, it's uh, probably between two and three. Oh, it's definitely over two. It's definitely over twenty five hundred. Okay, so like I have this thingy called my fitness pal. Yep. And, and yep. in that, I had to type in like all of my stuff, and it okay, it recommends fifteen hundred and forty calories. 
Okay. And that was based on weight and goal. Like I said, a goal weight. Um, and my goal weight was to lose 40 pounds. And that's over the I course of all time. That's not I think in a month. 1,500 is yeah. fine. Yeah. I think that's it, probably it said 1540 fine. 1,540 yeah. if your goal is to lose. I think 1,200 is also fine. Weight, but I think 1,500 yeah, is fine. Yeah, my fitness pal will never <laughs> recommend Jesus. anything under 1,200 calories. Okay. So it's always set. For so that. to go back to your question, I'm going to edit all this out. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, the you're answer not. to your question, Nick, my, my real tangible smart goal which is uh, specific and is measurable. We know if, I, if I'm getting to it. Um, a is for attainable? Yeah. It's attainable. That's, that's a realistic goal, which is what you just did, is you assisted me from an unattainable goal to a, a realistic one, um, which is the next letter. R is for realistic, I think. Yeah. And, and T is time-bound, because it's yep. a daily goal. We can check every day. So my SMART goal <laughs> for this activity <laughs> is going to be uh, 1,500 calories, right okay. on the money. All right. That's my daily calorie the, intake. If you wanted the other way to do it too is you can – you've got your set. But for anybody at home, another way to do it is you can decrease it throughout the month. Right. So your first week, you can knock it down to like 1,900 then go to 1,800 the second week, 1,600. You can do it that way as for, well. For me personally, I think I'm better setting it at 15 and going for it. Um, I The weaning strategy doesn't work for me and my okay. personal mentality. So like, and, and I've met people with alcohol treatment. I think we've both met people with alcohol treatment that try that same effect where they're like, hey, listen, I don't want to cold turkey this. Right. And, you know, if they're detoxing for medical that's reasons, different. that's a very different thing. Um, but if they're just like, well, I think I'm just going to slow it down and scale it back. A lot of times we'll tell them that probably doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Right. Generally, we, d we just don't see a ton of evidence that that would work because you're still tingling the same parts of your brain and we're not instigating real life. Right. Change. So I'm going to go all in for the month of October. Fifteen hundred calories, my man. That's that's my daily goal. That's my more specific one. And then I have some secondary goals like it'd be nice to lose as much weight or I don't want those 15 calories to be donuts. Right. right. Like I want exactly. them to be like healthy. Things. So you on that, you can set your macros. Yeah, that thing. So <laughs> your macros are your, your protein, your carbohydrates, and your fats. Yeah. So you have to have a – depending on what your goal is and what you're trying to do, you have to adjust those Okay. to fit your goal. The your, goal is 1,500. Well, no, 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 no. As far as like losing weight. So oh. like – and, and everybody's body is different. Like, everybody's body responds to these uh, differently. So, okay. like, for, for my goal, um, back like a year ago, I was trying to gain weight. I was okay. trying to bulk up. So but, we should partner up. So I had to... Well, if we just eat all well, of our meals together, what I'm, what I'm I'll getting just at, give you what I've got. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is that you kind of have to play around with it and figure out how your body responds to okay. it. Okay. So because it's not, it's not like you need this percentage has to be carbs, this percentage has to be protein, this Copy. percentage has to be fat. You have to figure out how your body reacts. So I want to keep it super simple because, you know, for Sober right. October, we're not nutritional, you know, experts, but we are people that can help you make a change in your life using mental health techniques, and, and quit something that you feel compelled to do. So 1,500 calories holds me accountable to not overeating. Even if I'm not necessarily filling those 1,500 with salad and broccoli, I, I will not overeat if it's 1,500, which is, is right. essentially the goal. Right. Okay, so 1,500 okay. is my goal. What's your cool. goal for the month? Oh, I, I'm not doing this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. This is going to be great. I'm just going to guinea pig. No, no I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eliminate added sugar. Okay, okay. So cutting back on the sugar stuff. Yeah. So what's in that cup right I, there, fella? It, it is uh, the 29th <laughs> no, it's of October. September. They're so hearing this in October. No, you're right. I'm totally living by that. I'm having chili tonight. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this is what's funny. And we, we should actually talk about this because this is a phenomenon that happens a lot. And when David was here last week, the same thing we talked about this is right. you, when you are setting a goal and you have a start date mm -hmm. in the future, that means your body or your mind naturally goes to, well, I got to get this in. Oh, God, that's totally happening to me. Yeah. Ever since I agreed to this, I have been struggling. Yeah. Like, it's bad. Yeah. Like, my family's like, oh, should we eat this or that? And I'm like, well, let's get the worst possible thing. Exactly. Because October's <laughs> going to be a bad month. I'm, I'm eliminating added sugar. So I can eat stuff that has sugar in it, like fruits, stuff like that. Okay. Right? But I'm not going to add sugar to anything. Okay. Including like snacks or like cookies and stuff like that. I'm not going to do you that. You don't pour sugar in right. your cookies? No. <laughs> um, so the only way I eat my cookies is with a little but, jar of sugar and I Jesus. scoop it up. To, I think I have a lot of room to grow this here. Is, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be life I'm going to learn a lot. You. But no, it's interesting because what you just said is totally true. Yeah. So the last couple of days, my yeah. mind has just been focusing. Gosh. Hyper-focusing on yep. sugar. Yep. i got to get in as much sugar as I can because 
on October 1st, I'm done. Yep. We've already got people that are listening to the show on our Patreon. Cindy Ash wrote us uh, in, in a comment on the last episode and said, guys, it's Halloween that month. And, like, I'm oh, really damn it, struggling it because she's like, <laughs> I have three children. Like, I am going to have whatever I want. So she's okay. like, she's already honing it in, though. She's like, I'm going to avoid Reese's and, like, I'm going to get through that month. So this is it's the last day of October. Exactly. So you can just pivot to November and then go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, uh, this is actually a really good segue into our topic today. Ah, so yes. for, for every episode... So our A block is going to be some sort of topic dealing with what we're doing, right? Yeah, and I'm going to be the patient, essentially, right. and you're going to ultimately use the addiction treatment models that, that you've worked on and, and bring that into this particular space. And, and real quick, before we dive into that, I, I want to say two things. Okay. One, you mentioned Data Scoop. And so for the general audience, um, we tried to add an update into the episode descriptions, both on Patreon and in our main feed. Uh, Data's son did go to rehab. Awesome. So, yeah, that same day, uh, only a couple of hours later, Data and I were, were texting back and forth, and his son did go uh, check into Great. the rehab that same day. So he is good. safe. Everything's okay. And thanks for all the good vibes. Folks were really you know reaching out to him, and so he's mm-hmm. very appreciative of that. Um, so that's the first announcement. And the second one. Guys, if you're not already a Patreon, this is the time. And it is not just a shameless plug to get your dollar. I don't really give a shit. This is an opportunity to experience a real addiction expert treating a real person who's trying to have real life change. Nick has dove into this. And it's funny because you and I were chit-chatting about how much you've prepared for October. And you're not just going into our little treasure trove of worksheets. You're writing your own. No, yeah, I've got – I'm writing my own material. So, like, all the stuff that we're going to do today – Everything is going to be free for every listener. It's right. going to be all on the podcast. Yes. Um, but as far as the stuff that I'm writing, that uh, we're going to be posting on Because we're going to have homework that's going to go right. on the Patreon, and so, my answers are going to go on the Patreon. There's too. a lot of stuff, too, that we're probably not going to get to in the show just for time reasons. But um, like what I've got put together today, as of right now, it's seven pages long. So Woo-hoo! it's it's pretty in-depth. And the topic that we're going to get into is... Um, identifying vulnerability. Okay. Right. So you had mentioned triggers when we were talking earlier on the phone. Right. So triggers are kind of a part of that, but it's not all encompassing. So they're not exactly one and the same. So uh, for the listeners, what a trigger is, there's a saying in neurobiology that neurons that fire together get wired together. Yeah. Right. So if two things are constantly occurring and they're occurring together, our brain creates a connection, a link between those two, so that when one, when we experience one, it automatically sets off the other one, right? right? And this is a shortcut for evolution, right? So we don't have to continue to relearn the same lesson. Yeah. We we begin to associate things together, and it allows our brain to become more efficient. Right. Eating that food tastes good, eat more of that food, and now whenever you're in the presence of that food, you feel good even before you eat it. Right. Because you're wiring now to have some kind of euphoria. Or I ate this purple-colored berry, and then I started vomiting for three days. Don't eat that purple-covered berry. Right. So now when I see that, my body reacts against it. it. Got it. Mm Exactly. Right? So that's awesome for survival. For evolution, this is really good. However, this becomes a problem when we're talking about trying to break those connections. Right. Right? So when you have a connection that you need to to sever yeah um like so for example sugar is amazing yeah right when i get when i eat sugar i get this kind of sugar buzz i get this good feeling i have energy it's exciting right right? um so whenever i see uh dunkin donuts yeah my brain automatically goes to oh that would, a donut would be really good right now. Yeah. And I, you know, my mouth even kind of starts to water a little bit. So I start getting a physical reaction. It is to so it. invisible. And, and right. that's what's weird about triggers is like, it's one way to talk about it and be like, oh, uh, yeah, I desire alcohol when I'm at the bar. Yeah, no, no crap. But like how invisible a lot of these triggers are that, like how you just described it. If you're just, if a buddy calls you and is like, hey, uh, do you want to get together? It's like, yeah, let's go overeat sushi. Like right. instantly it feels like that's what we need to do. And now I'm really excited about it. Like, oh, right. we're having pal time. And it's like, we didn't have to go that route. And but like, that's where it goes. Here's the other thing too with triggers is that there are triggers that can be very direct and connected directly. So like, so my example with the sugar is a direct connection. Yeah. There's also indirect triggers. So things that maybe absolutely have, have nothing to do with each other. Okay. But because of my habits have always been put together. Oh, okay. Like one has always been with the other. Oh, my God. So this is where we get into, you know, me hearing a song yeah. reminds me of this oh, one time, right? Dude. And so because those two <sighs> always happen together, 
I can't experience one without experiencing the other. I have so many so, of those. I do too. The example <laughs> I always used to use is um, when I smell the inside of a paper bag, a, like a paper sack, a okay. grocery bag. Yeah. I feel nauseous. Oh, oh, because that's what you'd throw up into. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because when I was a kid, this was back before we had the plastic sacks. You yeah, know? right. Like we all, when we got groceries, you had paper bags, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. so whenever I was home sick from school, you'd throw up into that. Mom would set one of those paper bags by the couch, so wow. every time I would throw up, I'd throw up into that. So now that smell is okay. linked in my brain. Those two, those neurons fired together, now they're wired together, and okay. that's just the reaction that my body has. Okay. So... There's different ways of breaking these connections. So that's kind of what a trigger is. Yeah. But we're going to speak more broadly into just identifying vulnerability. Okay. So if you were... Vulnerability for a relapse or to do the behavior you're trying right. to stop. So okay. we're going to talk about behaviors as being like the undesirable behavior. Okay. So we've got a behavior that we want, that's our goal, yeah. and we have this undesirable behavior that's the opposite of that. So your desired behavior is you want to eat healthy, you want and to... eat less. You know, eat below a certain calorie count, yes. the undesirable f- behavior then would be your habits, yes. right? Your habit of eating. Right. And this has become very difficult because you've established a pattern and it's very, very difficult to break patterns, yeah. right? But that's ultimately what you're going to have to do. Wow. And in order to do this, it's going to become very important that you identify your vulnerable spots. Okay. Right. So Get the ahead times, of it. yeah. Anticipate so where you, you might need fail. to be able to identify what are going to be the most difficult obstacles. When am I going to be most vulnerable to returning to old patterns of behavior? This is good. Yeah. Right. So I'm excited for this. So there's a d- bunch of different ways that we can do this. So first, I would start off with um, the externals. Yeah. Right? So the externals, we're going to talk about uh, places, people. In situations or okay. circumstances. Okay. All right. So those are all external outside of you. Okay. Right. So identifying places. So what would you say would be some of the places in which you recognize that you're going to be most vulnerable to the undesirable, undesirable behavior? So I'll give you an example. Yeah. So for me, I'm talking about eliminating added sugar. Right. I know right now going to a movie. Oh, yeah. A movie theater. That's going to be a, a situation one. of high vulnerability because I've al- I, I always do the same thing. I always get popcorn and M&Ms and I mix them together. Oh, yeah. It's kind of that sweet and salty taste. Yeah, that's you know? really smart. Yeah. <laughs> you're, 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 you're triggering yes, uh, me right now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're really bad know. at this. I know. <laughs> Terrible. This is the same thing you used to do in the rehab. Yeah, you were like, yeah. you know, some of that meth is so yeah. good, isn't it? The blue stuff? Yeah, you <laughs> had the blue stuff? Yeah. yeah. You shouldn't have that anymore. <laughs> yeah, stop. Stop. Stop, do, stop doing that meth. No, so, but I follow your right. question. Right. So, so that's something I have to prepare for. Am I going to not go to a movie oh, in October? Goodness. No, I'm probably going to go see something. But right. I, so I have Identify to... Identify it. Get yeah, ahead of I it. have to be... It, it's... Basically, think of like, uh, okay, so you're a football fan. Think of yeah. being like a, a football coach. Yeah. How important it is that you know your team's weaknesses. Anticipate it. Yeah. Right. Because if you know your weaknesses, you know your opponent knows. Okay. And your opponent's going to attack those weaknesses. Okay. So your opponent in this situation is your old pattern of behavior. Right. Right. So you're naturally. Yes. So let me let me try to throw one on each one of those because okay. I think I can do it off the top of my head. So the first one you said was uh, places, like locations, physical locations, locations yep. like your movie theater example. Yep. Mine, one of mine. Okay, this is a good one. This is totally true. I think about this all the time. South Rainbow Boulevard. If I am on South Rainbow and I am passing Raisin Canes and Carl's Jr. <laughs> and uh, all that stuff, and it's just like, well, why not? Because they're all on the right hand side. And, like, I'm heading in that direction. <laughs> and it's like, ah, I, you know, I just popped through really quick. So, like, I'm always really triggered right there. Like, it's it, I get off yep. the 215, I go down South Rainbow, and, like, there's just, like, five really quality places. And if I'm passing those locations, I am buzzing. Because I'm just like, well, maybe I should. No, I sh- Don't do it, Jim. Like, I have this whole, like, evil like, good angel thing on my shoulder mm-hmm. where they're like, don't do it, buddy. And I'm like, screw that. It's a superstar. And I got to have it. And it's like, ah, <laughs> oh, that gets me. So, okay, right. that's one. So that's right. a place that I'm triggered externally. Right, exactly. So kind of that old saying that uh, lack of preparation leads to poor performance, right? Yeah. So you have to be able to anticipate that. That's okay. one of the biggest 
struggles that people trying to make changes, like whether it be a New Year's resolution or somebody who's trying to stay clean and sober. They don't think about it. Right. That's that's always how uh, they get tripped up is they don't plan ahead. Right. And they just walk blindly into these situations. Right. It's one thing for they me get, to say, I want to uh, stay under 1,500 calories. Fine. Right. But identify before you get into real life yes. where you might fail. So right. one is a place, and that yep. place for me is a specific road right. where Next I one, can be triggered. People. People that might trigger me to overindulge in food. No, just people that are going to be, it's going to be high risk. Okay. So it's going to increase your vulnerability to returning to old patterns of behavior. Right. And here's the thing that I always like to hint at, or I always like to make sure I I explain to people is because when we talk about this, this is always the one that I get the most resistance on. Ah. Because people interpret this as, well, I can't be around these people anymore, or these people are bad people. And no, no. that's not what we're talking about at all. These people are probably great people. They're right. probably wonderful people. But right. we have to be realistic and understand that when I'm around this type of person I or this person, know. I always seem to interesting blank. Like whenever you and I hang out outside of this podcast, yeah. where are we? Sushi. Exactly. And I was going to say you. <laughs> I was going to say, yes. you're the problem. <laughs> I think I know no, how no, to no. beat this. Okay. Good podcast, everybody. Take care. We're you out. guys have got a premiere. <laughs> I'm going to live my best life. Now we've, no, no, now you've misunderstood. I'm back. I'm not the problem. Oh, okay. Because that's it's... what it felt like. <laughs> it's vulnerability. Okay. Right? Okay. So that leads to high vulnerability. So you have to now come up with a plan for how you're going to deal with that. Okay. Now. It could also be, uh, like, f- for me, if my goal is to eliminate added sugar, yeah. I know the people that um, put me in a high vulnerable situation. One is my mother. Okay. Because she's exactly like me, and she will put sugar on top of sugar. Okay. Right? Like, that's just how we grew up in the Midwest. It's yeah. like all sugar. It's always there. <laughs> right? Okay. So so that's nothing against my mom. She's no. a wonderful woman, but I have to be able to kind of... Just acknowledge it. Understand. And I think I'm following right? what you're saying, because, like, with, with places, I can choose to, to go home on a different road yes. that maybe doesn't have the same stuff, so I can avoid that. Um, but with people, I you know, I would still like to play golf or hang out with you. But I guess I, I would have to strategically structure that encounter to say, hey, uh, I'm not available to do certain things like sushi or, you know, go to these orgies you're always asking me to go to. We're just going <laughs> to. That has nothing to do with eating healthy. That's exercise. Oh, yeah, that's true. So <laughs> it's <just> cardio. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. There's some healthy eating involved. <laughs> hey I was gonna say I learned at the museum there's only 36 calories in a spoonful of oh jeez so you're good you know oh, very fantastic. low sugar <laughs> man we almost got through this wow. episode without the explicit tag <laughs> wow. and oh, no. there it goes <laughs> there you go <laughs> it's weird because anytime we record at level nine we don't have to mark those explicit it's weird I wonder what the ingredient is because <laughs> you invited the weirdo from Utah <laughs> he provokes us he brings out the worst <laughs> so third. Situation. I'm literally sitting over here reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> Lead in to say horrible things. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Jacob effect. Third thing, yeah. situations. So these are circumstances. Oh, right? God, okay. I've got one on the top of my head right now. What is it? Football. Uh, okay, great. It's yes. Sunday, I'm wearing my jersey, and yeah. like as soon as we wake up and it's like football time and, and the Panthers game is on, I have to have something. And it's like, yes. got to get some chips and dip, got to get a beer. Like, I got to I gotta have that while I'm watching my game yeah. or I don't feel like I did it. Like, right. it's so weird. It's very foreign. Right? Oh, yeah. It doesn't feel natural. And that's one of the ways that you can determine whether or not you've become dependent on something uh. is you remove it and you see what happens. Wow. So, like, for me... I kind of became very dependent on having popcorn, M and M's, and soda with while you're at a movie. Yeah. So the first time going to a movie without that, it just felt weird. Yeah. It didn't feel right. Huh. right? So other kind of situations, just be aware of like, um, you know, what are some things that put you in high risk that you know that you're going to have a strong temptation? Like for mm-hmm. me, I travel a lot for work. Oh, so that's the worst. I have I've got two trips. At the end of October, up to Reno. Oh, my god! I'm going to be there for three days apiece. And I know that is going to be very difficult for yep. me. Yep. Because when I'm staying at a hotel and they've got their breakfast in the morning or they've got cookies sitting out or yep. they've got all these things. Or if oh. I'm going to a training, they've got all this you know, donuts and all that stuff. It's going to be incredibly difficult. Yeah. And, you know, you're hitting on something. Because I'm thinking about when I used to travel. Boredom. Boredom right. is a situation. 
yeah. where if I have nothing going on, I feel like I need to do something and eating or ordering food or something like that feels like it's an agenda item. I feel like now, I did something. Great thought. Now let's go into the internal. Yeah. Okay. So those were all external okay. vulnerabilities. P- places, people, and situations are right. external. Okay. Internals are going to be your thoughts and your emotions. Oh, wow. Okay. So you just hit on the emotional part. Ooh. You hit on the boredom, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So we have to be aware of what kind of emotional state can we be in that is wow. going to put us at high vulnerability to returning to old behaviors. Yep. So boredom is one. Oh, um, I, I can tell you another one right now. Off the top of my head, okay. I already know it. Another one is anytime I get into like self pity. Anytime oh. I'm like, oh, I had a hard day today. <laughs> and I get home and I, I worked late. And like everybody, my family got to have a nice warm dinner. And I get home late and it's in the fridge. And it's like, well, am I going to eat this cold reheated casserole? Or am I going to order some Burger King like a champion? <laughs> and I get into the self-pity. And then yep. I'm like, you know what? I've earned it. And yeah. it's like, I'm going to take care of me because nobody else will. And it's like, I'm poisoning myself. Like, right. how is that a victory lap? Right. I do that anytime I feel jilted or I feel like I didn't get what I want or I did something and I, I'm not being appreciated, then Jim's victory lap is Jim's going to, you know, Poor pig Jim out on Jim needs some... a whopper. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, not one. <laughs> oh, no, no, because it's two for six. <laughs> Those damn deals, that's how they get you. Pick any two for five bucks. <laughs> Killing me. So okay. those emotions are a big part yes. of Yes. So, and... Here's the other thing, too, is we it becomes really easy to identify negative emotions yeah. as being something that triggers you, right? But positive emotions can do the same thing. Yeah. Like, for me, positive emotions can be very dangerous if I'm talking oh, about celebrate. sugar. Yeah. Yeah, because that was, again, part of my culture. Oh. Like, how we grew up, we celebrated everything by going out to eat. Yeah. Right? Everything right. was, all right. You got A's on your report card. Let's go out to eat. Yeah. yeah. That's, so, it's oh, wow. food is always paired with celebration. So, yeah. if something happens or I'm really excited about something, that immediately is where my brain goes to. Man. Right? No, that's totally true. And that's something we've said to people in the rehab, too, is like somebody that's dealing with alcohol. They'll, they'll tell us, hey, alcohol is how I mourn. Alcohol is how mm-hmm. I get through boredom and silences. Alcohol is how I celebrate. Alcohol is how I grieve. Alcohol is how I win. Yep. And it, it just shows up everywhere in life. And then the wire and fire together yep. is just, it feels weird. And in another, another point, this won't apply very much to my particular work in October, but for a lot of folks that are trying to quit something like alcohol, sex is very difficult. Uh, especially in that first year, because they associate having sex with having drinks. And so mm-hmm. it's like, oh, well, you got to have cocktails to loosen up, or you got to be the right amount of tipsy or whatever. And and sober sexuality is actually a really big part of the work that we do, too. Right. Which is why you're always having sex with our patients when they're sober. <laughs> That's that hands-on. Oh, hey, somebody laughed. <laughs> I'm killing it. <laughs> Thank you, Shay. You can come every week. Yeah. We're going to call you in every week. And just be the last track. Girl. <laughs> but, there you go, Jim. Also, for the board, Nick has not had sex with any of our Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that I that. know of. <laughs> and the last one is thoughts. Thoughts. So becoming aware. This is probably the most difficult. Okay. It's becoming aware of your thinking patterns, right? Becoming aware of one of the things that you had said was, I earned this. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's a thought right there that leads to high vulnerability. Yes. So becoming aware of your thought patterns can be very difficult. And this is actually, we're going to spend more time on this later because we're going to get into some CBT, some cognitive behavioral therapy. Nice. And a lot of that has to do with recognizing thoughts because a lot of times we have automatic responses to things yes. that lead to an emotion, that lead to a behavior, but it happens so quickly we don't even realize we thought about it. Yeah. We had an – it just happens that quickly. Yeah. So part of what we're going to be doing is working on slowing down that thought process, identifying distorted thinking patterns, identifying unhealthy thoughts – like that one you just had, yeah. and be able to recognize it. So that the next time that you have that thought, you're going to remember this. It, yeah. And because I'll know, you're going to remember this conversation. Yeah, that this isn't real. This is, yeah. It's just inside of me. So today we've covered triggers, and which yep. is identifying vulnerabilities, ways that I could fail in October, identifying it ahead of time. That way when it happens, we have a game plan for how I'm going to address that. And so from here, it sounds like the homework is probably going to be sussing that out in more depth. 
Yeah. So basically everybody, what we want you to do is we need to be able to write down some ideas and really think hard. Don't be surface level, really kind of get deep in identifying some of these, excuse me, some of these vulnerabilities. Externals, uh, people, places, and situations, yep. internals, emotions, uh, thoughts, I think were the two. Yep. Okay. And so making a list of that, whether that's a notebook paper or whether you jump into our Patreon, we're going to have some worksheets there that can help guide that work. Yep. And then you can see my answers. I'm going to be the guinea pig all month long. Um, Nick's going to post homeworks, and I'm going to complete them and then post them. So you guys can actually see, okay, these are Jim's real answers. So it'll be kind of a, an example anyway, kind of like the answers at the back of a math book, except these won't be right. Right. <laughs> these exactly. will not be accurate. Very exciting. Cool. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will discuss Why Do I Cry? You're listening to Pod Therapy. <laughs> Why do you cry? Uh, to this week's Therapy Producer sponsor is Nathan's Hot Dog Scoop. Nathan was an American actress, singer, dancer, and vaudevillian. During a career that spanned 45 years, she attained international stardom as an actress in both musical and dramatic roles, as a recording artist, and on the concert stage. Respected for her versatility, she received a Juvenile Academy Award, a Golden Globe Award, and a special Tony Award. Uh, (laughs) The name's almost in there. Nathan's Hot Dog Scoop was the first woman to win the Grammy Award for Album of the Year for his, her live recording, Nathan, at Carnegie Hall in 1961. If you'd like to join Nathan's Hot Dog Scooper, if you know who the hell he really is, you can go down to patreon.com slash therapy, comment on this episode for as little as a buck, and join us in supporting the show. Again, that's patreon.com slash therapy. All right, we're back. You're listening to Pod Therapy. Our next question, why do I cry? Hey guys, I just arrived in Texas from Toronto and walked from my hotel to a Starbucks. I wouldn't say the trip was hard on my body or mind, But now I feel a completely uncontrollable urge to cry. This has never happened before, and all I can find on Google are links to get help. I don't feel sad. I am not clinically depressed, but the internet is telling me I might be. (laughs) Have you ever encountered this before? Any suggestions on controlling this urge in a healthy way? Anonymous. It's a good question. That is a good question. You ever uncontrollably cry, Nick? Yeah, every Sunday morning... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> on the drive here starts about 10 30 <laughs> yeah. i can't i can't figure it out i mean i'm like <laughs> not depressed i don't know what yeah. it is i just do it I, i've seen this before and, and okay. I've, I've seen it where i think that this is what can baffle the writer is if you ask them why are you sad if you ask them what's going on sometimes the answer is not evident and we're like right. well i don't know like i'm just on a business trip like i'm not contemplating anything but somehow my emotions are taking me to the space of just despair. And, and sometimes I think that's true for us, where the emotion seems to show up before the cause. And so we don't have that cause effect thing of, I saw this commercial, now I feel sad. Or I got a letter from somebody that's hurting, and now I feel this way. Um, sometimes you just feel the state of that energy. Now, what I would probably be interested in, because I know you and I uh, subscribe very much to CBT, our theory is usually there is something that was there. Mm -hmm. It's just invisible to you. And if we got into a therapeutic dialogue, we might actually shine a light and discover what was invisible to you. But I will still concede that there are absolutely times when a person just feels emotions and they just pour out of us. And I don't think that's unhealthy. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with you. I have seen that happen. I've seen times, and Nick, I know you've seen this in your work, where the patient's sitting on the couch and we're not even talking about anything emotional and they just start crying Mm -hmm. and those hot tears just start flowing. And for them, it could just be the, the moment of exposure that I'm even talking to this other human and that you're here to help me. And there's just something about this. That's the dam is breaking and just Mm -hmm. truth is falling out. Even if I haven't really said anything, but just emotions are there. So to the writer, my first take is I I just don't think emotions necessarily have to have a cause. I think more often than not, they do. Mm -hmm. Um, But in this case, I don't think there's anything wrong with you. I just think that we can just be emotionally, you know, outpouring sometimes. And it's just a raw take. Well, and that's what's interesting, too, because the writer says that they don't feel sad. Yeah. They just feel like they need to cry. It's just coming out. So. Oh, boy, I get that, though. Right. And so I guess one of the things that I was kind of. Just to cry. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I one of the things that I was kind of thinking of is how difficult it is for people to actually be able to recognize emotion. Oh, yeah. Especially for males. That yeah. seems to be the pattern. Stereotypically. Right, yeah. because as we're raised, we're we're raised to kind of purge those emotions. Right. Like, it's not socially acceptable for a male to say, 
I feel sad or I feel hurt. Right. It is socially acceptable to for a male to say, I'm pissed off. I'm Anger. angry. Yeah. Right. So then yeah. we automatically get programmed that way which i think is why we see so many men with anger issues yes and i always like to say there's no real such thing as it's not like having an anger management issue it's yeah. an emotional management issue right because anger is typically a secondary emotion anger is a response to a primary emotion that's now dealt with right? so that's a good point to the writer because while we don't know the the, the details of the situation necessarily what you're talking about nick it, it can be true where you've repressed emotion for so long that all of a sudden your body is done, like, and it right. just comes out, and you're not necessarily triggered by anything. And I have seen that before. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that was the point you were, you were making there, yeah. but I think that it, it does flow naturally out of what you said. Yeah, I, I guess, yeah. So I would first initially look at maybe there's something a little bit deeper that just it's it's not, it's kind of below the surface. Yeah. Right? It's just something that sub- subconsciously we've kind of suppressed and not really aware of. Yeah. So, I don't know, it may not be a bad idea to actually talk to somebody about that. Maybe going in for one session with a therapist just for kind of an assessment, just to talk. I, I think it could be kind of a, a red flashing warning light that, that maybe something's going on. But, I mean, as a general human experience, I think a lot of us have just had moments where we're just caught up in emotion and we don't necessarily know why. Sure. Shay, you're nodding to that. I had that last week. I was <laughs> yeah. like... Did you write this? <laughs> no. <laughs> were you in no, Texas? No, it's funny. I was, yeah, I was just... Like, he was on shift. I've actually been crying for the past two weeks, nonstop, mm. actually. Okay. I ripped up my ankle playing basketball. Oh, so wow. I'm hobbled Ouch. up, and I'm, I've just been very upset about that. But, yeah, so he was gone. I had to go stay at my mom's house, and I was just like, I'm so sad. I just want to cry. Now, in your case, it sounds like there was a situation that was yeah. bigger, which is I'm physically injured. I, yeah. I, feel, I miss my husband. I'm just – I'm feeling vulnerable. And mm-hmm. so that kind of wore on you quite a bit. Yeah, for sure. But, there, yeah, I've – there's times all the time where I'll just be like, man, I'm sad and I don't know why you I'm sad. You don't even know where it comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why, Nick, I'm not surprised that when that person typed it into Google, depression does come up. Right. Sure. Which it can be a sign of depression sure. to feel sullen and to feel low and to want to cry, mm-hmm. but to not necessarily be able to point to it. Right. Now, so here's another question, too, because we've talked about this before as far as a clinically significant amount of distress. Yeah. Somebody so, actually wrote us on Twitter about right. that. Yeah. So with this, if... To our writer, sounds like you don't feel sad, you don't feel depressed. The only thing that's really going on is you feel the urge to cry, and you're crying. So cry, and is that causing a significant amount of emotional distress? If it's not, yeah, then what's the problem, right? Well, I mean, then you're and just that's not to minimize just, it. If no, it no, no, yeah, you, you're allowed to tell us, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm kind of getting the sense here; of, it's more of a question like. Should I be concerned? Yeah. Right? And if, if right. that's the question, should I be concerned, then I think, well, if you're not already concerned and you just cry occasionally right. for no apparent reason and it's not causing you any kind of significant distress in your life, it's yeah. not affecting the way that you work, it's you're emotionally okay, well, then maybe that's just something you do. And this is us, writer, again, not to minimize it, but one of the things that Nick and I hear all the time is a lot of people are very scared that something's wrong with them. And so a lot of the time, what we're initially doing is to take a look at them and, and, and oftentimes doing exactly what Nick just did, which is to say, well, let's let's compare what you're going through and ask, what are the consequences of it? How is this interfering with your life at work? Are you crying during meetings? Are you not able to perform your job um, with your family? Are you crying at the dinner table? And this is confusing people. Um, is, this, is this hurting you in consequences? And if it is, then we're like, yeah, something's wrong. Let's fix this. Mm-hmm. If it's not, we usually consider that what we call sub clinical, which isn't to say that you're not allowed to talk to us. It isn't to say you're not allowed to work on it, but it is to say, hey, we're not worried about this right Mm now. We'll monitor it with you, but there's nothing, quote unquote, wrong with you. Right. Right. And and that's something that I would imagine, Andrew, you've seen a ton in the field, too. Whenever you show up on the scene of people that are going through something Mm -hmm. and they're like, well, don't leave me. You guys. And you're like, we are first responders, dude. We're not going to babysit you all day. (laughs) But a lot of times you probably find yourself telling people, this doesn't reach the threshold that I need to do something with you. Sure. Um, and and I, I, but I still want to validate you. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we're not here to mess with you until you don't matter. But I imagine that's something you guys have bumped into a lot in the field. Yeah, a ton. Uh, we got to think from their point of view a lot of times. Like, right. You know, they something has happened that where they, they called 911 because they, they feel it's an emergency. Right. Where we get there and, of course, us in our field, we're like, 
we've got a very different sense of what's an emergency and right. what's actually happening than yeah, some right. people, right? I mean, we we just came off of a four victim car wreck where two kids died, Jeez. and we come to this person, but that may very well be the worst thing that's ever happened to him, right? You know, you got to think that exactly. Right. Yeah. So. Um, w- there's a lot of times where we think, you know, I saw a dog outside, and I remembered 10 years ago I had a dog, and it made me really sad. Right, right. And, and so, you know, it, it just making stuff up here. But, mm-hmm. but that, yeah, you resonate with that idea. Exactly. That and, so, and so we don't, them. we, especially if this is like 3 a.m. on on the back end of our 48-hour yeah, shift, yeah. and we're Getting thinking, to the like, end of the patience. are yeah. you kidding me right now? Right. But, Cat in a tree. But you don't want to sit here and berate them because right. it may very well be like you're saying objectively the worst thing that's ever happened to them. Yeah. Being able to hone so, that empathy. Exactly. I think is a big and part so, yeah. you know, it, we, we, we train ourselves a lot to, well, it, it goes along with the be professional thing, but put ourselves in that person's shoes where right. I, exactly. So yeah, just, it's just appreciating the common humanity. And right. Exactly. A frightened person. Is and so we're never, we we're be. never going to go in and say, are you kidding me right now? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we're objectifying or objectively looking at the situation and talk them, talk them through it. Exactly. And so writer, I think that we want to definitely, you know, be the same way that Andrew is to his folks, which is to say, this does not sound like an emergency. Sure. That's not to say it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. This does matter, and, and we're concerned that you're concerned, and we definitely want you to feel better. But I think that we want to make sure we're doing our job to tell you what Nick said, which is, hey, this does not look like the kind of thing that we would call clinical depression, but we want you to keep an eye on it. If this is the first time that's happened and you just find hot tears in an airport, um, okay, absorb that, reflect on it, do some meditating on it, monitor yourself. Because if you keep seeing that over and over and over again, there could be something going on. Right. And, you know, especially there's there's situations where there's a hormonal situation. Right. We've seen that before where just hormones are happening and biochemicals are, are transferring mm-hmm. and all of a sudden tears are falling out. And we're like, what is wrong with me? Yeah, Why I mean, am I sobbing? That could be from a change of medication, could you know, be. something like that. Yeah. Could be a lot of different things. So I guess ultimately another, another thing that I always like to encourage people to do is to take a look at if you identify that this isn't a problem – identify some conditions under which it would be a problem. So right. you're prepared if like, let's say, you know, it's not a problem right now, but if it doesn't change in the next couple months, if I'm still experiencing this, then maybe it becomes a problem. Yeah. Or or if I notice depressed feelings going along with it, then I know it's a problem. Then you've got some kind of threshold for which you can make decisions. I absolutely agree. So to the writer, the, the homework that I'm going to give you is I just want you to monitor this. And if this turns into something that you're seeing over and over and over again, um, or it's starting to interfere with work life or your ability to function and just kind of solve your day, I do want you to check in with a therapist. And I, I hope that we can just be an informer to you and triage you for right now and say monitor this. If you see it getting worse, check in with a therapist. They may even want you to do some blood work if it's something that they they suspect may be hormones. Mm-hmm. Um, but for right now, just monitor it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, to all humans out there, we are emotional beings. And I think that one of the things we've done poorly in culture sometimes is we've made it seem like emotions are fundamentally bad and we all need to be like Vulcans and just be always logical. That is not the case. You are an emotional being. You're allowed to just have hot tears and have an emotional reaction and there's nothing wrong or broken with you if that's the case. Sure. So I do understand this is confounding too. Yeah, and, and, and you hit on it being if if this writer is a male and societally you've been saying you, you're not allowed to have these emotions, you're not allowed right. to cry. Mm-hmm. I work in a very macho field. Yeah, um, right. And a lot of type A personalities are you are not allowed to show emotion or that. So right. I I would reiterate what you guys are saying. If you are a male writer, don't bury it. Don't you know? Right. Keep an eye on it. Yeah. Definitely. Very true. You know, very true. Firefighters cry all the time. They claim it's the smoke. <laughs> I see right through. Uh, go back to the station and hide in a corner and yeah. don't let the other, yeah. the other dude see you. Talking to the guy, I'm like, "Hey man, come here, bring it in." He's like, "Jim, we are literally in a four alarm fire right now." No, 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 come on, bud. I see it in your eyes. Okay, so come here, buddy. Little come boy. here. Bring it here. Okay, Jim, he swing it. the axe and get us out of here. <laughs> Eventually. Let's deal with the now. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will discuss gambling addiction. Ooh. You're listening to Pod Therapy. This week's their producer sponsor is Dr. Ben Dawn. Ben, voiced by Larry Kenny, is the son of Claudus and is the leader and hereditary lord of the Thundercats. True story. His adventures are shown from childhood to adulthood on Third Earth and New Thundera, together with his friends and followers, 
the Thundercats. <laughs> if you would like to join Dr. Ben Don, hi <laughs> You can go to www.patreon.com slash therapy and sign up. Again, that's www.patreon.com slash therapy. We're back. You're listening to Pod Therapy. Our next question is about gambling addiction. Very opportune. Hey guys, I absolutely have a gambling addiction. I believe that this email is the first step towards solving that problem. I have drunkenly sent you an email about an unrelated issue in the past, and while it's true that was a different issue, I believe it all comes down to an ability to regulate myself. I don't have much of a question. I honestly believe that telling you that I have a problem is a good first step. I suppose the only thing worthy of discussing is what's next. This part probably doesn't need to be said because telling you all this tells me all that I need to know. I need to stop gambling, even a day at a time, and I need to talk to someone about all the things that are a part of this. I've listened to you guys for a long time, but I haven't heard you talk about gambling specifically, so hopefully this rambling message can help someone. Also, don't let me take this one back. While the last one was just complaining for complaining's sake, I believe that this email should be discussed. I love you guys so much for all that you do. Uh, and I think that we're going to keep the name anonymous on this one because I wasn't sure whether or not we should do it, but um, we're with you. <laughs> so we'll call this one Gambler Anonymous. I yeah, think okay. we'll probably be safe. So good question. And a very opportune. Yeah. Welcome to Sober October, buddy. This is your chance. Yep. Join this us. Is a, this is a good. Uh, this good time is the to time do it. to do it. So you should firstly take a look at those external triggers. Yes. Yes, and those internal triggers. Yes. And get on Patreon. And do the damn homework. <laughs> and I think yeah. And um, what episode did we have Sydney on? Oh good. It, it was four. in year one. Yeah. yeah it, was it was like very a fourth early. episode. Sydney Smith, Doctor Sydney Smith. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. She is the gambling expert. Um, down here in uh, Las Vegas, and she does an amazing job. Um, so she would actually be. Uh, I would go back and listen to that episode. I think, I think we actually have her contact info in the yeah. episode too. I believe. Yeah. Um, and she, if you're, she, uh, she runs the Rise Rise isn't it? Rise, Rise Center for Recovery. That's here it. In Rise Las Center Vegas. for Recovery. Yep. Um, and she's yeah, she's done a lot of work. She travels all over the United States doing, you know, speaking engagements and everything. Right. She's really good at gambling addiction. So. Um, good friend of the show. Uh, yeah, you can probably reach out to her, but it, I find anybody in your area. Any, yeah. There's uh, always going to be a gamblers yeah. anonymous and there's very likely going to be some kind of gambling treatment program. But here's the thing, writer, that I think we have to shine a light on. And I just want to congratulate you on when Nick and I are assessing anybody for addiction stuff. The very first question that we have as a clinical team is we're trying to figure out what is their awareness of this problem, Mm -hmm. right? Are they in, you know, denial, so to speak, or what we clinically describe as pre-contemplation? Or are they aware of the problem? And in Mm -hmm. this situation, what I'm reading that I think is very important is you saying, I recognize this is a problem. I'm writing to you so -hmm. that there is an artifact of this, so that hopefully you will read it back to me, so that you will comment on it, so that I will feel some sense of accountability. A human in the world knows now. Right. And now I have admitted it. And God, that is so profound psychologically. Mm-hmm. To admit something to yourself and to somebody else has this profound changing effect. It's like this bookmark on your mind. And it makes it that much harder to slip back under the covers of denial and having no mm-hmm. clue about this problem again. Yeah, definitely. I, that's, that's definitely the first step. And then the next question then is, once you've identified that, are you willing to address it? Right. right. And what are you willing to do to address it? Because then the next thing is, you know, people will say, well, yeah, I know my my gambling is a problem. Uh, I'm just not ready to do anything about it yet. Right. Right. Or I'm willing to do something about it as long as it's not too much of an inconvenience. Yes. And that's one of the things uh, working in addiction that I can tell you is anything that you do to address an addiction is going to be an inconvenience. Yes. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of work. And that's one of the things like with this Sober October for everybody listening, anybody who's making a life change. And I write about this a little bit in the the stuff that I've, I've put together is how it's so difficult to make a change mm. because we are – we're, we have patterns of behavior, right? And those patterns of behavior have made our lives comfortable. We right. have comfort zones. We have, we feel most comfortable when we're in situations in which we can predict outcomes, mm. right? But unfortunately, when you are making a big life change, like you're changing your 
eating patterns or you're getting clean and sober or you're starting an exercise program, you naturally are coming outside of your comfort zone. Yes. And that is very difficult because that means that you can't predict outcomes of situations. This is totally new to you. Yes. And it becomes really easy to slip back into old patterns of behavior. So I I think, number one, uh, yeah, you've definitely let us know. So there's some accountability there. Yes. Uh, Find a professional to talk about this with yes. any any addiction specialist if you can find somebody that specializes specializes in gambling that's going to be better. best but don't don't say that you know because you can't find perfect that you're not allowed to have progress right you you do something you know writer yep. and that is something that we are going to hold you accountable and to and then and then uh, gamblers anonymous yes. i know a lot of folks uh, probably a lot of our listeners too, um, especially are going to have issues with the anonymous meetings for the religious component to sure. it sure and that definitely makes sense. I've been to a ton of AA meetings, NA meetings, and that's always something that kind of I kind of cringe a little bit right. <laughs> every time I sit through those. Right. Um, but you have to kind of see through that to get the bigger message. Yes. You can you can definitely kind of weed through some of that in your mind. If you can find a GA meeting, that's great. Uh, there, uh, just Google uh, uh, gam. Gamblers, Gamblers Anonymous. Anonymous. Yeah. Google that. See what resources are in the area. If you don't have that, I guarantee you would probably be accepted at uh, an NA meeting. Yes. Oh, yeah. Narcotics absolutely. Anonymous. They'll definitely accept you in that, too. So find something, some sort of uh, group that you can – the fellowship is the big thing. That's yes. the thing that people really get out of that. And having other people that are going through the similar thing that, yes. that you can kind of draw from experience and, and wisdom. So, writer – what I believe, when I look at you clinically, from what I'm, I'm gleaning from your email, I, it's clear to me that you've stepped into what Nick and I would describe as a stage of change, which we call contemplation. So you're no longer in pre-contemplation, which is denial, not even having a clue about this. You're in contemplation, which is what it feels like to stand up and look down and realize, oh my God, the Grand Canyon's been there all along, and I didn't see it because I was laying on my belly and I had my face against the ground, and I just thought the earth was flat, right? So now I stand up, and I see this huge problem in front of me. I don't know what to do about it. I don't know how I'm going to cross this canyon, but I can see it. The next stage is preparation. And preparation would look like you walking up next to this canyon, sizing it up, and starting to brainstorm ways that you might change. And that is what we're doing for you right now. What does it look like for you to set three things in your life that you could explore? What does it look like to look at Gamblers Anonymous? What does it look like for you to look at therapists in your area? What does it look like for you to do Sober October with us and take a shot at this? I want you to brainstorm. Now, that's not you moving your feet yet. That's just you brainstorming. And that would be evidence of you stepping into the next solid stage of change. From there, we start to lead into action. But I want to circle back to something Nick said because I want this for all the listeners. This is Jim getting on a soapbox for a minute because there's something that, that actually clinically bothers me. It is true. Alcoholics Anonymous and the entire 12 step traditions of Narcotics Anonymous, uh, Cocaine Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous, Sex Addict Anonymous, it is very typical inside of their tradition to discuss what they call a higher power. Okay? Mm-hmm. It used to be much more overtly religious. They have since scaled it back quite a bit, but those fellowships still have that as part of their 12 steps. They acknowledge that I could not solve this problem inside of myself, and I needed to surrender myself to something bigger than myself, and they usually have code words that sound like religion. It is unacceptable to me as a clinician, and, and Nick is very obviously an atheist, and this is we've worked together hand in hand, and you never our clients have tried to split us, and it's never worked because we do not accept the excuse that because you have this, this worldview that there is no God, that therefore you have to die in your addiction. If the, the United States Congress opens up every single session with a prayer that has never stopped an atheist from walking into that Congress and demanding rights that they know they should be entitled to and demanding change that they want to see in their communities. And the same should be for you. I want you to be selfish. I want you to walk into any room that has anything that could possibly improve your life, and regardless of the other humans that are in that room, and regardless of what their first step says, regardless of any references to God, I want you to sit down, and I want you to acknowledge that you have a problem, and try to listen to the ways that these other humans have changed their lives, okay? And there is something there for you. Mm -hmm. But I have seen lots of people do absolutely nothing using their worldview as their convenient excuse to die in their addiction. Unacceptable to me. You must do something. And right. if you go into the fellowships, you will see there are agnostic AAs and atheist AAs, and, and they break into those groups too. There's smart recovery, smart recovery, which is uh, completely they've taken that's all intentionally that out. And then I know, unreligious. I know a lot of atheists that will go to an AA meeting, and they just kind of, in their own mind, they just kind of 
they change some of this stuff yes. as far as like, um, you know, the higher power, they identify the higher, higher powers being the group. Yes. Right. So then that kind of becomes their higher power. Um, sometimes people will, you know, like with God, uh, redefine that as being standing for good orderly direction. Yes. You know, or or it, there's all sorts of different ways that people can. And you know, we're not just being rhetorical, you know, and again, the writer obviously didn't have a problem with this, but it, it's something that we bump into a lot. Right. And for us, it is just another denial mechanism for a person not to have to change. And, and at the end of the day, guys, for us, it's not about this concept of higher power or God. What, what the theory, why that works is because if you keep looking at yourself and saying, all I have to do is try and I can fix this. All I have to do is just really want this and I can fix this. We as clinical professionals who literally earn our living helping people fix know it's not so easy just to reach inside of yourself and have the answer. Mm-hmm. You've, you've got years and years and years of neurons that have wired together, lifestyles that have compounded, patterns that you can be completely oblivious to. You need an external helper. And that is how addiction gets solved. That's why insurance covers this. And so going to 12-step is not you needing God. It's you recognizing, I am insufficient internally to just make this problem go away. I need other human beings. I need a tribe who are also trying to fix this. And together as a group, there's a way for me to get healthy. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. Come in with that mentality and you'll have all you need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I have much more limited experience than you guys have with this type of thing. But in my limited experience... When people say that, you know, I don't want to go to the the 12-step meeting because of this, it is just an excuse. Sure. It, it is a, it's a reason to not it, – it's one more reason to not go. Yeah. And right. it, it, it's it's a, a nice thing. You know, people don't talk to me about their addictions, but people do talk to me about their atheism. Sure. And this comes up as part of that. Right. And, yeah, I mean, if, if you got the work to do, you go somewhere where you can do the work. Right. right. That's it. Yeah. If you have cancer and the only hospital in your neighborhood is a Catholic-run hospital, yep. are you going to not go? <laughs> You're like, well, they have crosses on the wall. Screw that shit. Get in there and get healthy. What are you doing? You don't believe in any of this anyway. What do you care? Yeah. <laughs> like Those are decorations. <laughs> they don't matter to you at all. What right. you like is the part where you don't die. <laughs> like, do that. So anyway, but I'll get off my soapbox. But um, yeah. no, I, I hope we did a good job of, of answering the question that he didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> this is us telling you to go forward, man. So brainstorm some ways that uh, you could uh, continue to improve on this problem. We're going to hold you accountable to it. And you know what? I'll even push you a step further. I want to see an email. I want you to write us. Yeah, please yeah. do. I want you to follow up. You obviously know how to get a hold of us. You've actually written us twice mm-hmm. and uh, three times, actually. And so I want you to write us back and tell us, all right, guys, I heard the episode and uh, here are the three things that I'm looking at doing that's Mm -hmm. all i need from you don't even have to make a commitment to do them yet just show me three good ideas yeah show me that you've looked into it yeah we'll we will reply to that absolutely absolutely we will so all right end of the show time for apologies patreons reviews announcements yeah Uh, as far as announcements obviously we're doing sober october so sober october if you're not already a patreon this is the month to do it you can quit us in november (laughs) <laughs> but uh, it, for as little as a buck, guys, you can jump into our Patreon, uh, watch Jim go through the entire addiction treatment process for my own stuff, and and read Nick's uh, personally written materials that are going to be workshops and uh, worksheets and homeworks and some really cool stuff to do a deep dive in yourself, whether you're trying to stop uh, using a substance or stop eating unhealthy, or whether you're just trying to have real meaningful change in your life, whether you're trying to deal with your addiction to anger or your, your uh, compulsion towards sadness or whatever it is, there's something there for you. Mm-hmm. So we definitely want to uh, encourage you to be a part of that um other announcements fantasy football is going just well uh i am not doing great um i'm playing brian layman's philly uh freudians which is my favorite name of the league by the way um i thought that he killed that he spelled freud with a ph and yeah. you're playing against uh carl or steve young which is my second favorite name in the league yeah, yeah it's um, actually pretty competitive Stuart. yeah so i really want you to beat him by the way uh, so far, it's close it's really i'm close. rooting for you really close and uh smitty uh messaged me earlier this week Saying that he forgot to look at his lineup this week, so he's gonna um, he's gonna get destroyed, I think, by Andrea. <laughs> Good, yeah. yeah, I'm rooting for Andrea. She came yeah. into the show. Smitty's been on the show too. Wow, we've had a lot of guests now. Yeah. We've almost met like probably 10 percent of our entire Patreon. I think Smitty community. was on the episode where my mail was read. So oh, really? oh, really? Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I forgot awesome. that you wrote into the show. Very good. How's that going, by the way? Good. Yeah? You kind of settling into your role? and Because yeah. your, your email was about imposter ship, feeling like yeah. you're not equipped to do what you're supposed to do. Now you've been into the role now for about a year. Just like two years now. Yeah, yeah. Two years. So yeah, it, we're just over our hurdle of all of the stuff that stressed me out last year. It was funny, you were talking about um, the triggers and stuff. My job was definitely a trigger last mm-hmm. year for... Wow. Unhealthy eating, unfortunately. Right. It will happen. But uh, yeah, I think 
yeah, just the time and settling into the role, getting more confidence. Yeah, cool. It's been a lot better. I think he would say it's been better, too. Oh, loads. <laughs> <laughs> you don't feel like an imposter is a firefighter, do you? Because that would be not very effective. Oh, man. Um, should I go in? I shouldn't go in. You guys should go. <laughs> so he just, I don't want to do it. He just got his hazmat certification. <laughs> oh, okay. So he deals with all the scary chemicals and oh, stuff. Fun. Oh, fun. And he, like, just got it. And oh. he... I was he was on shift the other day and he messages me and I'm, he's like I'm about to go down on this hazmat call it's this oh my and I was gosh. like why you yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like oh, you're with sick. someone right lose your cell phone yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you're with people that have done this longer than you right that's wow. funny wow so she's the one telling you you're an imposter yeah. <laughs> it's always well, good no, to have I mean, your no. wife on the other side saying I don't know if you've thought about this but what if you're not good enough yeah <laughs> thanks hon well, <laughs> probably want to get home I think we all second guess ourselves in our jobs right yes but, yeah yeah. It's more of a safety so, issue. That's sure. fair. That's, sure. that's a slightly <laughs> different thing. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that you're doing well. Yeah. And so other announcements. Um, I, do, I do have a very brief apology. I'd like to apologize to dolphins. Dear dolphins. The dolphins. I'm sorry that when I heard that more than 50 dolphins washed ashore a beach dead, that I accused you of being part of a doomsday alien cult. <laughs> that was insensitive. I don't know what caused your deaths, but it probably wasn't a cult. But I can't rule it out. So, you can't. I don't know that for sure. That's a typical apology from Jim. That's yeah. I'm sorry about doing this, but you know, I may be <laughs> but right. I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, you don't know for sure. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm sorry if it hurt your feelings, Dolphins. Oh, You've been God. through enough. So that's uh, that's my only apology for the week. I, I'm certain oh, I have in job. no way hurt anybody. Oh, that's not to say that there hasn't been other bad <laughs> tweets. It's just, it's to say that's the only one I remember. I want to read these emails from the Dolphin community. That <laughs> really gotten after you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm not a big enough deal that Pete has noticed. <laughs> or SeaWorld's going to call and be like, this was hurtful and ignorant. So anyway, that's the only other big announcement. Okay. And usually, uh, the first uh, week of the month, we are going to thank all of our Patreons. As it so happens, uh, we have been so fixated on Sober October. That's the excuse I'm sticking to. We kind of forgot. We kind of forgot. So next so, week. Patreons, you're going to have plenty of love on Patreon this month. You're finally going to get your money's worth. Good for you. And uh, But in week two, we will definitely thank everybody. And so this gives you an opportunity. If you're hearing this and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm about to sign up because I'm totally going to get in on all this uh, Sober October stuff, get in because we will totally announce you as a new Therapal, Therapod, or Theraproducer, or Ex Officio. Shayla, would you like to announce our newest Therapod? Ooh. Who is our newest Therapod? Is it me? It's yes. <laughs> and for five more bucks, it could also be Andrew. <laughs> you got any cheddar on you? <laughs> Join the cult. <laughs> so you are our newest Therapod. Yeah. Thank you so much for your donation. Nice. We, we I got my dinosaur gift. I'm happy about it. We're nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm so proud of that. That is like my favorite thing. Just, I'm so glad that exists. So if you want to know what the hell we're talking about, follow us on Twitter, at Pod Therapy Guys, and then donate five bucks on Patreon and you too can have your very own uh, shout out with awesome uh, dinosaur cult thing. We've never announced our Twitter handles. Oh, so. yeah, you announce mine all the time. Oh. Every time I say something offensive, you let people know yeah. how they could give me feedback, At, which they often do. The Good. dolphins right for that. this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the <laughs> dolphins are coming. Yeah, the Miami dolphins are At like, F-U. <laughs> At Sin City Shrink for Jim. Yeah. I'm at Nick.Tangeman. Yes. I, I don't think it's, it's there's no dot, it's underscore. Oh, damn it. Now I have to look. It's at Nick underscore Tangman. All right, we'll have that for later. I'll check. I know his Twitter handle. It's at Nick underscore Tangman, T-A-N-G-E-M-A-N. Tangaman is how you pronounce that. Yep. And I'm just uh, at Sin City Shrink. No underscores or anything like that. And we especially want to thank our bosses, the Elite Eight Mysterious and Shrouded Illuminati members of our fan clubs, the Thera Producers. Thank you, Smitty Scoop, Jake Schneider, Robert Brownie Jr., Mint, Chairman of the Board, Kayla Lansbury, David Data Scoop Vialon, Judy Schneider, Nathan's Hot Dog Scoop, and Dr. Ben Dawn, and ex officio board members Elio Dare and Dan Martin. If you would like to hear this episode uncut, unedited, and hear our extra bonus content with our two guests today and enjoy our Sober October project, you can go to www.patreon.com slash therapy and support us for as little as a buck and thank you all for supporting mental health that's all the time that we've got for this week's session we want to thank our landlords the ice cream social podcast and our guests who contributed to our show today shay and andrew we really appreciate it 
Remember, pod therapy isn't something you should keep all to yourself. Help us reach others by opening this episode's description in your podcast app and copying and pasting the link provided into your social media. Don't forget, you can find us at facebook.com slash pod therapy, on Twitter at pod therapy guys, and at patreon.com slash therapy. Do you want to submit a question to the show? Ask anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. I'm Nick Tangerman, the prophet of the dolphins. Thanks, and we'll see you for your appointment next week.